He goes on to say in verse 2, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but rather be transformed. Okay, you ready for a little congregation participation? In receiving the question and hearing the question, what is the pattern of our world, what would you say? Feel free to raise your hand, just shout it out. What would you say is the pattern? Paul's saying, don't conform to the pattern of the world. Well, Well, what is that? For us in our culture, what is the pattern of our world? Self is the center. We're selfish people. What else? Okay, that was like five answers. Let's try one more time right here. Pride. What else? Is there something over here? Power. Performance. Position. Prestige. Control. Anybody else? What was that? Meism. Yeah, yeah. It, it's this, hey, everything result revolves around me. My comfort. My convenience. I'm going to be tolerant of everybody. I'm going to be driven by success at some level. I'm going to pull myself up by my own bootstraps. I'm going to be an individual. I'm going to be autonomous. I want to grab as much power as I can. I want to get more money in my life. I want to climb the corporate ladder. I want to be successful. All these things. This is the pattern of our world. Now, it would be really easy at this point to say, I'm just going to condemn the world, right? It would be really easy for me in this sermon to say, the world is bad. Don't go be like the world. But the reality is, all those things we just listed, we do those things, don't we? Like, if you're honest with yourself, you wake up some mornings and you're like, man, I just want to be in control. Like, I just want everybody else to know that I'm always right. And if I could have a little bit more power in my life, everything would align perfectly. Or you wake up and you think to yourself, man, if I just had a little bit more money in my bank account... Like things would be so much easier for me. Or there's this thing over here that I want that I see everybody else having and I should have it too, right? Like we do all those things. We pursue and we want and we desire all those things we just listed. And what Paul is saying here is he's saying don't be conformed to that. Um, So I have some Plato here. And, you know, when I think of conforming to something, I think of, like, clay or Play-Doh being pushed into a mold, right? Because when something is pushed into a mold, like, it's just passive. Like, you're not really thinking about, like, what's going to come out. You're just, like, smushing some stuff in, and you're like, oh, what's going to come out of this? And you're like, oh, I don't know. It's a chicken wing, right? (laughs) It's just what it is, right? Or you think to yourself, yeah, I'm just going along to get along, and I'm just going to follow the crowd and do what everybody else is doing and just kind of become like what I see around me. And the thing that comes out as I'm passive is a carrot. It's a a food mold is what this is, right? It's for little kids. But it's that image of like just getting pushed into something and just being okay with what is ever coming out when it's all done. Bacon, right? And so now compare that with this. I have a picture. This is a little pitcher or vase that my daughter made. Um, And I love this thing. It sits above our sink. It's this little pitcher, this little vase. And I love it because there's so much intentionality in that little piece. Like she shaped it in a certain way. She colored certain parts of it. She put texture and imprints on it. And you can pick it up and you can pour something out of it. You could put flowers in it. I mean, if I had little Play-Doh molds around my house on display, you'd be like, that's weird, right? I don't know about this guy. If I was displaying them as art. But to see that somewhere around my house, you're like, oh yeah, like that's sweet. Like his daughter intentionally put that together. What Paul is saying is don't conform to the world. Don't be passive and just be squished into the mold of this world and come out being whatever. Rather, be intentional in the way you're ordering your life so that you can be distinct. He says, offer yourself as a living sacrifice so that you can be holy. The term holy literally means to be set apart, to be distinct, to be different, to be unique. And we are called to not conform, but to be transformed, to be set apart and distinct. So how do you do that? 
How is it that you resist the passivity of just going along with the world and the pattern of this world so that you can be intentional and be set apart from the world? Well, Paul says it doesn't happen through trying hard. It's not as though we just buckle down and try harder. It's not as though we work to perform spiritually and impress other people. He says the way that you undergo transformation, he says, is by, in verse 2, the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind.